The world's population is increasing at a rate of 80 million people per year, or 1.5 million people per week. This rapid increase will effectively double the demand for food in the first half of this century. In order to feed these people, agriculture must become more productive and more sustainable. In Australia, efficient and sustainable production of cereals partly depends upon controlling crop weeds, of which the most pervasive is ryegrass. Well, the problem with annual ryegrass arose through our own doing. We introduced ryegrass into Australia uh, and planted it across 70 million hectares uh, as a highly productive uh, forage for livestock. It's a uh, very valuable source of feed and for that reason, when uh, sheep production was really booming in Australia, we were quite happy to sow this annual pasture right across the countryside. But in the last 30 years, there's been a great change to cropping and cropping occurred on these fields right the way across the country that were heavily infested with ryegrass. The increasing trend to crop corresponded with the introduction of conservation farming, or no-till farming, which protects soil structure and preserves soil moisture by retaining crop residues. No-till cropping also meant a heavy reliance on herbicides to control crop weeds. Matched with a tendency in Australia to cut rates below label recommendations and lack of crop rotation, widespread herbicide resistance evolved. We had an intensification of cropping programs uh, where we were planting more crops in the rotation and less pasture phases, um, which again increased the selection pressure or increased the use of herbicides, increasing our selection pressure on the weeds with these herbicides. But we also had a move to more conservation type cropping systems where we removed other forms of weed control such as cultivation and stubble burning with the sole focus for weed control now being squarely on herbicide use. A large 466 paddock survey conducted in WA in 2010 determined that resistance to Group A and Group B herbicides had continued to increase to high levels when compared with results from the 2003 survey. A worrying sign is that many populations indicate developing trifluralin resistance. In this random survey, almost all populations remain susceptible to glyphosate. Ryegrass has evolved resistance to many herbicides across very large areas of the country. And now we must come up with much more integrated and diverse strategies if we're going to control ryegrass and other crop weeds. So nine out of 10 fields that you walk into will have resistant ryegrass plants present. Now this is also occurring for other weed species, for wild radish in particular in Western Australia, very high proportions of herbicide resistance is now occurring in this weed species as well. So again, about 60% of the wild radish populations have some form of herbicide resistance present. Understanding the main factors that play a role in the evolution of resistant weed populations is crucial to manage and counteract this problem, as is investing in tools to prevent weeds from recontaminating the seed bank with viable seeds. So we must be more sustainable with our herbicides. We must reduce our reliance on them by what we call diversifying or integrating the control strategies. We must use non-chemical strategies and farmers are doing it and there are a range of things that farmers can do to keep the herbicides working here. Ray Harrington farms in Darkin, 280 kilometres south of Perth in Western Australia. He faced the threat of herbicide resistant crop weeds and focused his attention on the chaff fraction at harvest to manage his weed seed bank. I started as a traditional sheep farmer based on ryegrass pastures and 30% crop. 16 years ago, I moved into 100% crop. This move, I knew I would inevitably face resistant ryegrass and radish. My country cousins, as I call them, had already resistance from the wheat loop and wheat loop and rotation. I knew I was no cleverer than they are. I would end up with resistance, so I had to do something. And I knew I had to, in my mind, work out what I was going to do with chaff at harvest. That was where the weed seed set control was. In my mind became the project, the big C. For chaff, I was going to catch it, cart it, crush it, or cremate it. That's where it all started. I found some mining technology in Collie, 
that they were using to crush coal. And I looked at that machine working and I knew if I put ryegrass and radish in that, it would destroy it. And that's when the destructor was born. Ray Harrington developed the Harrington Seed Destructor through necessity, a device that is towed behind the header and processes chaff sufficiently to destroy weed seeds during the harvest operation. This is a standard chaff cart transfer system. Collects the chaff off the sieves, up through the transfer system, into the swivel, into the centre, then it's transferred from there by air back to the mill. The guts of how this machine works, you can see the rows of bars inside the machine and they travel in opposite direction. The speed of the bars is where the impact comes from. Travelling opposite, the outside row of bars, they're doing 500 k's an hour, so the next row of bars is slightly slower. That's what creates the impact and that's what smashes the ryegrass. Trial results over the last four years have shown that 90% of the ryegrass seed that enters into the front of the header during the harvest operation and then exits the harvester in the chaff fraction is destroyed by the seed destructor. In addition to the results that we've established with annual ryegrass, we've also determined that other weed species such as wild radish, brown grass and wild oats have very high proportions of seed destruction due to the effects of the, the Harrington seed destructor. The results in the subsequent growing seasons are that obviously if we've destroyed very high proportions of weed seed during harvest, then those weed seeds are not going to produce germinable seeds at the start of the following growing season. So that has a significant impact on the number of weeds and the types of weed species that you're having to control in the next cropping phase. While WA suffers most from herbicide resistant crop weeds, the problem is now widespread throughout Australia. In other areas of the country there hasn't been the, the rapid adoption of the conservation cropping systems that we've seen here in Western Australia, um, but they're now catching up quite rapidly and subsequently so are the levels of herbicide resistance. Even though we've got herbicide resistance occurring in weed populations right across the country, they're not necessarily the same species all the time, and, but the situations are the same. The resistance is occurring under similar conditions in intensive cropping programs where there's sole reliance on herbicides for weed control. Well, our cropping needs to be sustainable and sustainable means profitable. Uh, we need to uh, use a range of weed control tactics, especially what we call harvest weed seed management. So we diversify away from chemicals so that our herbicides will work. For herbicides, when on a good thing, don't stick to them. Uh, change the herbicides so that they'll be sustainable.